Jesus Christ does not come for a defeated church. So we still have to push back the forces of darkness and get in a state of complete dominion and glory. Now when he does come for that kind of church, then afterwards, after that, it will be absolute chaos. We are largely going to look at Revelation 13 because it talks about two beasts, the false prophet, the first one is called the Antichrist, but then later on it also speaks about the system where no one shall buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. Occupy till I come. Every space here has to be occupied in every sector. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, you've already taken possession of this place in the spirit. You know, um, uh, when in, uh, in October, when uh, there, was, uh, there was a trade show there in Lugogo where we used to meet, and they told us we have to pause for two or three weeks and we moved to the office there in Bugorovi, I knew that time that our grace for that end, that place had ended. I just knew that our time there was up. We were supposed to be going somewhere else. But um, we didn't go somewhere as fast as I thought we would. So when we went for the December break, and some Kano ministries decided to come and start fighting us, you know, and putting up all sorts of stops and pulling moves. So they told me, some guys who meet on Thursday said now they want to meet there on Friday. There are so many things I could have done, eh? but our grace there had ended. Eh? So I said, let, let, let them meet on Friday. Let's see how that helps them. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you something. Um, which is very important, and which we are going to be teaching all the people, wherever it is that we go. There is only one thing that matters, and that is learning how to walk, follow the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? You know, I was talking with somebody, and he was telling me um, uh, all the all these steps to success. You know, if you want to be successful, these are the habits of successful people. They wake up very early in the morning, they do what you want. You, you, You've seen that those books, eh? The seven habits of highly effective people. Eh? I told him I only know one habit. And it's in Romans 8 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. Eh? That's it. That is it. And that is the guarantee of success in our time. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, once you learn how to be led by the Spirit of God, once you learn how to be led by the Spirit of God, and once you let him lead you, you don't have to worry about other things. You don't have to worry about anybody. You don't have to be in a position where in ministry on Thursday, but you're looking out for the people on Friday and you're what? Like, uh, you don't have to. You see, eh? you are comfortable in your skin. You know what it is that God has given you to do. And you measure your success against what the Lord has told you to do. Not against anybody else. What, what anybody else is doing. Praise the Lord. And that is really um, uh, the key to so many because any time can you imagine how burdensome ministry can be when you're the kind of person who is looking around what everybody is doing? Like when do you ever have fun? When do you ever enjoy ministry? Praise the Lord. But when you really know that the Lord is sending me to do this. I'm going to do it. And um, uh, you're comfortable. Just, you know, there is somewhere where you're going and you know where you're going. And that is the first step, by the way. That uh, the first thing we are going to be teaching people because we are going to we are going to go around, you know, to schools and so on and universities. And uh, we have a big work to do there. A very, very big work to do there. You have no idea. You have absolutely no idea how big a work we have to do there. Because 
Somebody was telling me, you know, you've had all this talk of uh, the the anti-homosexuality bill and all that. Eh? And I'm thinking, man, Ugandans really are good at talking, eh? but they do nothing. Now, they can get information. You know, there was a man who wrote a book long time ago. Have you heard of George Owen? Have you heard of the animal farm? Now, that man who wrote that book, not that book, not the animal farm, the one who wrote another book called 1984, he said that there are two ways, two ways of controlling people and dulling their minds. The first one is by denying them information. And you only give them very little information so that they have very little to go by. He said the second one, which is more effective, is by giving them too much information that they become paralyzed by it. So they know too much, but they do nothing about what they know. Praise the Lord. Amen? Now, I realize that actually now, when people have Bible apps on their, by, on their phones and what, do you know that's when they do nothing about those? <laughs> you understand? Eh? Where you can check, and now it has also made me lazy. Because there was a time I could memorize scriptures, just like this I could pick them up, but now I know I don't have to memorize it. I can just get two keywords and I feed them in the, and it brings up the scripture. So I say, ah, where is that scripture that I feel it and it brings up? So it makes you lazy. But my point is, either you can deny them, if, that's what that man wrote. You deny them information or give them too much information that they drown in it. Then he said, you can either deny them pleasure and keep them working in servitude all the time and control them, or you can give them too much pleasure and from Monday to Sunday they are in pleasure and they become useless. And you see, you can, you know, now you realize that we are in a sea of information. People know so many things, and but very little act upon them. For instance, they were telling me the other day about a young man who went to um, 17, I think, went to a certain church and was giving, and he had gotten born again, and he was giving his testimony of how he was recruited from Busoga, from the schools in Busoga at nine years to go and recruit children his age into homosexuality. They were giving him a salary of 40 million. And they were even giving him reports even if he was not going to school because the headmaster was also getting money. So he would take reports to his parents that he passed, yet he has not stepped in school. All they needed is for him to show them how many kids that age he has recruited. Now he said he had, in that period he has recruited around 200 kids. Some of them of course get problems, they suffer from all sorts of things. Because you know that you really cannot um, uh, and at, then by age of 15 he has two cars. You know? And everybody is looking at him and saying man but the ba he, he said he's so miserable every day he tries to commit suicide. Every day he tries to commit suicide, but fails. Tries again, fails. Tries again, fails. Now, those people are going for nine year old. They are not talking. They are not in parliament. You, you are in parliament. Mm. Now, for us, we are not going to talk. We are going to go and teach them the gospel of the end time. Amen? You think they are too young. They are not. The devil wants to get them even younger than that. Can you imagine? Now, there was a time we used to think, ah, these children are too young to be introduced. They are not. You, do you see the cartoons that they, these days that they, they have? Eh? And they even put, you know, um, uh, no PG. These ones are free for everyone to watch. And you look at them and it's full of witchcraft. It's full of homosexuality. It's full of um, all sorts of things. And they are being prepped for something there. And the church which is supposed to be doing the unprepared, like, you know, you understand, eh? is talking, they are talking, they are giving good sermons. Let me tell you, we started our school's ministry. Eh? We started. We are not going to joke. 
We are going to go to all the schools in Kampala, Jinja, Mbade, everywhere. And tell them that the devil is after your soul, but God is after your soul also. So at least we give them a chance. Because imagine, um, in Parliament, there's, when you talk to those people, like, human rights, human rights, you're recruiting nine-year-olds. Shut up. What human rights? When you're destroying the lives of nine-year-olds. By the way, first of all, nine-year-old, even if they were having normal sex between the girl and the boy, come on, nine years. But now it's between boy and boy. And in not in Kampala, no, they are going to the villages, villages, deep in the villages. The spoils. Now I was thinking, if I just people, man. Now they come up that they want a law. And then even the law, because the president got money from the Vasiyazi, Vasiyazi, he cannot sign it into a bill. He can't. Remember what happened in Kenya? In Kenya, the wife of the American president came on a Friday, on a Saturday, in a special session. The parliament of Kenya passed the homosexuality bill. On a Sunday, she left Kenya. On Monday, USAID gave, they are right here next to us, USAID gave um, uh, Kenya 16 billion dollars. You see it? You see what we are saying? Now, when I saw 16 billion dollars, I was like, man, God save us. Because even for 1 billion, seven will save all of us. The man is a hungry beast. Like, I'm telling you, I said for 16 billion, you might even say to enter university, must have sex with another man. Man, we are in serious trouble. And now the thing is this. Then I was talking with somebody, and I was telling him that, um, you know, he was telling me that, you know, what is the church, the role of the church in the fighting you know those conversations, eh? Yeah, for us, we cannot watch. For us, we are the church. We are supposed to preach good, good messages, preach the gospel. Eh? You know that ancient thinking, eh? Eh? Which people like, uh, <laughs> Pastor Conde here know about. Eh? <laughs> because they are the ones who stay with pastors who think like that. I told him the role of the church is to take over the state. Let me tell you something. You think, you think, let me tell you that something. You think that Biden is giving away his money? No, he's giving away American money to promote the devil's agenda because they took over that country. They could not do that under Trump. You understand? Eh? So the role of the church is to take over the state. If you think we are joking, we are going to take it over. Now, and that is the only way we are going to save them. The only way. Now, if you don't support that, just don't come back here next Friday. I'm telling you. Because Bariku sent us America. Eh? Never but syndica agenda yet stand. Pass the homosexuality bill will give you 16 billion. Of American taxpayers' money. Why? Because they are in control of what? Of that country. Now wait and see. This church, which we had before, of just coming and singing Uncle David, you guys, eh? <laughs> Pastor Monde, go and tell your people, for us, we are going to, because I, I mean, it's all of this, by the way, I saw something which was important. One day I'm just scrolling through. Um, uh, my Twitter feed. And, uh, then I see a lady who is reciting the Luciferian oath which they took in 2010. 2009, actually. And I listened to the whole of it. And I was, I was like, man, because they start by saying, 
um, uh, we have taken the same oath. We have to take over control of this world. We are going to create so many different fronts and nobody should know that we work together. Because if they know that we are working together, that's the end of us. Then they said they are coming from a certain bloodline, which is pure. And those people who are from that pure bloodline who have taken that oath are not even supposed to marry or get children from people who have unpure blood. So that, and then the devil tells them that their children are going to rule this world for generations to come. But first of all, they have to create all this deception. And they said that we are going to create an illusion. And everybody will believe the illusion. So that when somebody comes up who has not believed it and who has seen through our lies, everybody will abuse him as stupid. And you will be an outcast in the society. Because our the power of the illusion will be so great that the few people who do not buy into it are the ones who are seen as outcasts. And then they, 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 there's a number of things there they say. And then they said they are going to recruit some, they call them associate members. They are not part of us. They will not get eternal life. But we shall deceive them that if they work very hard, we shall they shall attain to our status. But we shall just use them to subjugate the other people down. I'm paraphrasing some of the words. We shall just use them to subjugate the people down. And then, when those people, we shall confuse them, put things in their food, in their drinks, in everything that dulls their mind. Have you ever seen that people are very dull these days? Let me tell you, the people who are sharpest are in the villages. I'm telling you. Where a pastor Cody comes from? Because <laughs> They put things which dull your mind in the water you drink. Eh? In your water. In your toothpaste. In the beers. Those who drink beer. You know? You know I called a friend of mine who drinks beer. I told him you should start drinking Ugandan beers. Forget about those ones abroad. They have also been laced with fake things. To dull people's minds. So if you want to drink beer, you drink. Not you. I'm talking, I was talking to him. I was telling him, eh? but some of you drink it, you're here just to get. <laughs> so I told him that. They, <laughs> then they said, in that same oath, they said we shall put things in their drinks, in their food, in what? Which makes, which make them sick. And then they will come to us for treat them, treatment. And then we'll give them substances which will make them even more sick. And then they will continue coming to us until we wiped them all out because they are useless fleas. That's what they get. But by the way, <laughs> those guys, eh, the devil brings them around and he, they, their view of humanity is the same as the devils. They are the same. Like the evil. Like they are, you know, they, they, are, they are so close to him that they think exactly like him. So you see, and one of the tricks they use, by the way, which people have so many people even in the church have not realized eh? is using the power of mi mixed messaging. Let me tell you, if you don't know spiritual things, you will not know how powerful mixed messaging is. Mixed messaging is somebody telling you this and then the next day tells you the opposite. Do you know what that does? It makes you do nothing. I saw it here during COVID. And now COVID was actually an example of how people become so dull, where you tell them, this is no speak, this, this is just saying, and they say, ah, ah, World Health Organization has said about what? And now they are the ones who are all stupid. But me, I told them, even these pastors, I told them, don't get vaccinated, it is fake. There is no such thing as... Now they are saying, in America, in their thing, that COVID was just their seasonal flu rebranded. And advertised. But let me tell you, do you need a big advertising campaign to market a pandemic? Do you understand? You don't need if there is a pandemic, you don't need big media. If there 
if there is a pandemic, people will see. You don't need to advertise. Now and and now you see everybody was caught in that stupidity because they have put things in your water. Praise the Lord. And in your water. Now, <laughs> let this man tell you what they not told him about coffee. What did they not tell you about coffee? <laughs> yeah? You give <laughs> You uh, tell us very fast. Anyway, you sit out tell them. Since you told me. The microphone has stopped you from talking. Now, this man likes to drink this coffee, <laughs> this coffee, and so do I. This coffee. Now he said the other day, I told him that you know that in that this coffee they put something which bathes in you homosexual desires. They are, <laughs> but these guys are wicked. You have no idea. So also me, I started drinking Ugandan coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like there is an onslaught everywhere you turn. They are like on you. They want <laughs> man. And it is all to get your soul. Can you like you <laughs> those who drink what? It is there. Water, it is there. Yeah? You know I used to drink the other water which I used to like. Yeah? And I went to this one. Very cheap. <laughs> Because it has no fluoride. If you just went on Google, even now, and checked what fluoride does to your head, you would be shocked. Fluoride. It's in our drinking water. It's in a, it's a lot of it in those nice mineral waters. A lot of it. You know it even, even dulls your spiritual senses. One day you might wake up and you can no longer speak in tongues. Because you drank resort. <laughs> you get a monim, yeah? <laughs> you can't speak in tongues. Your spiritual senses have been dulled completely. But then, <laughs> man, and, and like, this is the only, but now, the other thing I also had in those people's thoughts, which, which, which amused me is they said these people must never find us out that we are giving them an illusion because it, it, it gives you a reality which is fake and you buy into it and you get you make decisions according to something which is not there like the way people did with COVID and at the end of the day I told the people who are in, who are my friends, I told them, if you find, if you have symptoms of Rubia Amina, aka COVID, you know Rubia Amina, <laughs> that was what they were calling COVID. <laughs> and when, when, anyway, I told you, if you have symptoms, don't go to hospital. Don't. Especially if you have a good insurance. Because people who are, people who have good insurance, cover. We are going to hospital and I know a number of them. There is somebody who drove to hospital, parked his car, went up a flight of stairs properly. As soon as he arrived there, hey, COVID, oh, oxygen. Some days later, dead. Can you imagine? If he had stayed home, he would be alive. Hospitals paid all their bank debts during COVID. I was told that by somebody who works in a bank. He even mentioned for me hospitals, I can't even mention them here, but I won't. This one was about to go down. All the loans were paid during COVID. Once you go there, when you have a big insurance cover, they cannot let you go. They have to milk all of it. And then they will give a bill of 200 million when you're dead. And you could have been alive. Imagine you go up a flight of stairs and reach the doctor. How are you? I just came for a check. What? I'm coughing. What? Or oh, let us test. 
you have COVID. <laughs> then they, the next thing you're in, they weed you away, they take you, pa, oxygen. You came upstairs. Sometimes four or five flights of stairs. Like there was, and now that has, that's the illusion. The reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to see that eh? we are supposed to save people from illusionary things because if you do not warn people, there's another one coming. The next one is climate change. You've heard of that. Now today there was a story in a newspaper, in a UK newspaper, and they were saying that countries, the scientists, climate change scientists, came up with a paper saying the truth is the world, the temperatures of the world have not increased since 1998. We are lying to people. They didn't say that, but they said the temperatures have not increased since what? 1998. But all the countries said, no, no, we cannot give people that information because climate change deniers will be empowered. But the highest recorded temperatures in the last 50 years were in 1998. After that, they have been going down and basically they have not even touched what they were in 1998. But if you read the news, global warming, man, glaciers are going down. What? Lies. Lies. The world is run on lies. Why did Jesus say that the devil is the father of lies? Like, don't think he just manufactures lies of these lies which you tell. Of I love you when you don't love her. No, he manufactures big lies which deceive the whole the whole world. Can you imagine what kind of psychological operation COVID was? Where there is nothing but it is something, and they make it there. And for them, that was the like the Puzoeza. Praise the Lord. Now. The only way we can save people away from the lies is actually by teaching them how to be led by the Spirit of God. Because somebody was who were praying about um, our school's ministry. And somebody said he was asking the Lord, what are we going to be teaching these people? And the Lord told him, first teach them how to pray in tongues. Just teach them how to pray in tongues. Baptize, get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now after that, the Holy Spirit takes over and somehow you lead them where you want them to. You understand? Eh? Because you are going to have a single chance with this person. You go find somebody maybe in S5, S6, or second year, third year, and you not see them again. But if you've planted the seed of baptism of the Holy Spirit, everywhere they go, somehow the Lord has an input in their lives. Praise the Lord. And you see, so we get to a point where we have to actually help people make decisions for Christ. And uh, you open uh, Jude, start from verse, verse 16, I think. Jude, verse 16. Jude, verse 16. Okay. Now he says, these are now, I want you to understand he's talking about people in the church. He says, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swearing words, flattering people to gain advantage. Let me first tell you something before we go any further from that. You see, when, um, when I decided to actually start seeking the Lord, about the direction he wants me to take in my life. Um, uh, the first thing that he did was to take me away from the illusion of the world. The big illusion in the world. I'm not even talking about these ones which come through media. The biggest illusion in the world is the fact that your life is determined from outside you. Big illusion. So you meet people, what do you do? Where do you work? What do you work? You understand? Eh? And they are all tying their lives about what they do. And then you become very guilty when you do nothing. Because they ask you what you, what do you do and you, there is nothing. So actually when I realized that I had no answers, I started avoiding people. Roger knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you ask him what he does. <laughs> 
I started avoiding people. But then I knew that your life is determined from inside you. Like outside it does not matter. Once you sort the inside, everything outside settles itself. You understand? Your life is determined from what is inside. And now God pulls you from all that crowd, that noise, and isolates you somewhere. And then puts you there. And then starts telling you, forget about what. Then people asking you, even your relatives, what? Now what do you do? At least start a business. Do, because they want you to do. You see, eh? And there's nothing wrong with doing. But what I was doing was more important than doing. You see, eh? Now, to start building your life from within, from inside yourself, and building it the way you want it to be. Then, I, then you realize that God gave every one of us a canvas. You know, like those canvases which they do paintings on? A blank canvas. Blank. Everything you write or you draw on that canvas becomes the reality of your life later on. You can draw their fake things. You can draw their beautiful things. You, it's your mind. It's the canvas. Everything you draw on that canvas becomes your reality. Praise the Lord. Now, most people don't most people don't have anything on their canvas. They are pursuing their life. They, you know, they just go and they move and you know, one thing leads to you know another, and then this they don't have an idea of what they want to see and so on. So they just move and they move and they move. And they are living in an illusion which is created by the enemy, by the way. And that, that's Jesus said that you don't be like the Gentiles who are concerned about what are you going to eat, what are you going to what. Now that was the first lesson that I had to learn. Because I knew some I knew I had a job, which wasn't so bad. I knew I could pay my rent, I could do what I could, you know. But now I don't have a job, I don't have nothing. And then when you go to pray, the Lord is leading you to a scripture that look at the birds in the air. They don't have, <laughs> they don't have jobs. They don't have what, but your heavenly Father feeds them. <laughs> then I was like, man, eh? and then actually you look and realize that the only people who actually are concerned about what they are going to eat are human beings. Yet in the hierarchy of God, we are so far ahead. Eh? But to the birds, even the what they don't care, but somehow they eat. And then Jesus said that. Look at the birds. They are sold as part of what? He said, how much more are you? Even the very hair in your head is numbered. Now, if the crown of God's creation is worried about what they are going to eat, yet the list of his creation are not worried. And they will eat. Have you ever found the bird starving? Unless you've locked it up somewhere. Praise the Lord. And then he said, the Lord... <laughs> And then, okay, it was a, I'll be honest with you, it was a challenge for me. That's why that time I used to sing that, I used to love singing that song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Oh Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning in me. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Eh? All that I bleed that thy hand has provided. Man. That minister to me. All that I have needed, your hand has provided. Praise the Lord. There is a place for needed. There is a place for wanted. Now maybe all that I have wanted. <laughs> the same hand has provided. But at the beginning it was needed. Because I needed food. Eh? There's a difference between a, a need and a want. You understand? Eh? The body needs food. Eh? So you need food, right? A need is something without which you cannot operate. For instance, a car needs uh, petrol or fuel or gasoline. Because without it, you can't operate, right? And your body needs food, right? Eh? But your body does not need the Range Rover. But it wants it. So we graduate from needs to want. You will be okay without the Range Rover, praise the Lord. Eh? But you will be more okay with it. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. So now you start with all that I have needed. Then you go to Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. Now you are no longer in needs, you are in wants. Eh? You don't, you don't, <laughs> you, you just need shelter to sleep, but you don't, you know, praise the Lord. Anyway, so I'm saying, so he took away from an illusion of you have to work, you have to do this. And then actually, that all that I have needed, thy hand has provided. And I would sing that song, sing it, meditate on it, and sing, sing about it. And until I actually completely got it inside me, that there is nothing I need that God is not going to provide. Praise the Lord. I knew that he was going to provide anything that I need, regardless of how big the need, God is going to provide. And now that was a big milestone. Because now I no longer worried about where I'm going to get this, where I'm going to get the other. I no longer worried that the month is ending, where am I going to get rent? Because all that I needed, the hand has provided. Now after that, um, uh, remember, okay, let's read here. These are grumblers, complainers. Now when people do not understand these things, they be among the church, but they are grumblers. They are complainers. They do not understand anything about how God does his thing. So they just be there grumbling. And the one thing that happens is they do not grow they ask themselves. They remain children all their lives. There's something I've, I've, I've taken so long without doing. I think even the last time I did it, I um, I I I, I used Roger. Roger, come and go. You, you come. Now this is basic. This is basic. Whatever you turn around like this. Now, um, um let's imagine. These are three parts of a human being. Now you see one of those children there. Or imagine a baby. Hmm? A kid. Like. Now if you get born again, when you're, let's say, how old are you? Don't tell me, I'm joking. <laughs> this is even men don't fear telling their age. <laughs> Especially single men. <laughs> Anyway, praise the Lord. Now, um, <clears throat> when, when, if let's say you get born again it, it, when you're 23, let's say you're 23, you get born again. Now, that means that your body is 23 years old. Your, your soul or your mind, your mind and will is how many years old? 23 also. Because they start developing at the same time. Actually, the minute you're conceived and your body starts developing inside your mother's womb, even your mind starts developing at that time. So they are the same age, 23, 23. But now imagine there is a baby here. When you get born again, now there is a new person in you who is the regenerate spirit. Previously, these people were working together and they do not have any interruption. When the body wants something, the mind says, yeah. Okay? You understand? Eh? Let's say the body sees a very beautiful woman. The mind says, I'm going to get you a number. You understand? Eh? So, they are working together. I'm just giving an example. Eh? Don't look at me badly. Now, um, uh, there is nothing there. Now, after that, somebody gets born again. Now, there comes a young baby who comes in. But the problem with that baby is he has a lot of is entitled because he's born of God. And you see, he's born of God and he's a spirit and the spirit of God is in, you know, eh? So now that baby comes and he starts wanting to dictate how you live your life. You understand? So now, um, uh, you wake up one day and this one has, wants to go to the beach this one is already plotting the journey to the beach. I'm giving an example. But the spirit says, no, 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 there is an overnight. You should go and pray. Then now you, there is a confusion. The things which you used to do comfortably are no longer doing comfortably. Because now there is a third opinion. And that opinion is perfect. And the spirit is perfect. You understand? Eh? 
The spirit of a man is what? If they are born again. That's First John chapter 3, verse 9. Have you ever read that scripture? Which confuses so many people. You put it there. First John chapter 3. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Your spirit cannot sin. It is impossible. You understand? That doesn't mean him and him don't sin. Even in real life, they what? In a, <laughs> but my point is, but the spirit is perfect because that's where God sits. Now, whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed, for God's seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. He does not say he should not sin. He says he cannot sin. Who is he talking about? Your spirit man. You understand? Cannot sin. Even when the other sin, the spirit man is in objection. He's in defiance. You understand? Now, and I'm trying to show you something. Now, when you grow up like this, as soon as this happens and this man comes, your purpose is to grow your spirit man and get him to be of a bigger stature than these ones. Okay? Some people get born again and their spirits remain babies until they die. Their spirit man is a baby. They never listen to him. They never what? They do not know. When you tell them something, they, they don't understand. It's too complicated for them because the spirit man is a baby. Just like, you know. But now you're supposed to grow him, grow the spirit man and then eventually the spirit man is this side and now he's dictating the affairs of this person. Now that person is called spiritual. In other words, he's being controlled by what? Spirit. And now he can easily hear the voice of God. He can easily see, feel the direction of God. It's so easy for them to do those things because their spirit man is developed and has been developed. Now the duty of developing your spirit man is yours. It is not God's. It is up to you to wake up every day just like you feed your body every day and feed your mind with whatever every day. You also have to make sure you feed your, your spirit because your spirit has food. Okay? For instance, the body, the body has a voice. The voice of the body is called what? Feeding. I feel hungry, I feel tired, I feel sleepy, I feel what? That is the, the body is speaking. That I feel hungry. Okay? Now, the mind also has a voice. And that, that voice is called reason or logic. Okay? Why do you want me to do this? Why should I do this? The mind wants to understand everything. That is its way. So if somebody tells you, do that and say, why? That is the mind speaking. Okay? Now, the spirit also has a voice. That voice is called conscience. And conscience comes in many ways. Conscience is what tells you you should not do this, you should do the other, you should not take this part, you should take the other. And small, small things where you feel, I'm not supposed to do this. I think it's time. Somebody was asking me the other day, you may be seated. Somebody was asking me the other day um, uh, about yesterday, actually, telling me that how did you know that your time, the other place had come to an end? And I said, I just know. You just know. How did you know that your time in the Bugorovi office had ended? I just know. You see, eh? Like, it's not like God told me now, Olivia. Yeah, no, he didn't. But you just wake up in the morning and you know, because your spirit man is developed, you know that our time, my time here is up. Now, like the other office used to have in Renzori Towers. When I woke up and I decided my time there is over, I, I did not even go there for like two or three weeks because I was tired of the place. Everything in me was screaming uh, uh, the time for here is over. So I just told uh, admin, we need another office. I, we can no longer be here. And we did it urgently. And then I did not even step in that place because my spirit was telling me time out. How does the spirit... Uh, you just know. You see, eh? These things you just know, this is right. This is, like you have developed your spirit and you fed it and now it has come to a place where the direction of God is not confusing. It is, you know, like you're speaking to an adult person. Your spirit is now an adult, so, so to speak. Eh? So it understands, you know, directions. It can look at somebody and say that one is fake. It can look at this person and say this one is a good person who is coming into my life from the spirit of God and things like that. So 
um, uh, and then your spirit can, will always make the right decisions to pursue God. Because that's where his, his, um, his handle is. He does, his handle is not in your head or in your body. It's in your spirit. And he wants you to allow your spirit to control you and then that way God will control you. So then, um, uh, also, I woke up one day and I was tired of the, that office, tired of it. I would get, find every excuse not to go there. So I said, we need another office. My time here is up. Now, they say, how would you know that your time here is up? By the way, you think the story of the cloud leading the children of Israel. When the cloud moves, they do what? I have learned that when the cloud moves, I don't stay. <laughs> and like when you stay, you suffer so many problems because you start having issues. What people are, your neighbors are, and by the way, there can even be scenarios outside which tell you your time here is up. You understand? It can be in a house where you've been staying. You were at good, you know, in good terms with your neighbors, and suddenly the neighbors become very unreasonable. Everybody is what they don't see one is. Then you say, maybe my time, is, my time here is up. Now some of you will want to fight, fight in the spirit, fight in the spirit. But the Lord is leading you somewhere else. The cloud is what? Moving. So you move with the cloud. Anyhow, so now, when you develop your spirit man, there are things which you, like you, you do not have to. And that's, this is the purpose of God. If you go to Jer Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 31, Jeremiah 31 verse 33. The purpose of God is that you're not told, you don't come and inquire all the time and so on. You can know things without. But this is the new, the, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law in their minds and I'll write it on their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. The next verse, he says, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. I'll, I'll stop there. That they will know me. They will know you know that this is the voice of God. And you can just even young kids, you ask these children. They know. And by the way, it's even fewer in young children because they don't reason out a lot. When they don't feel like doing something, they don't feel like doing it. And they can actually save you a lot. You wake up in the morning, you're going for a journey. And it is supposed to excite your child. But the child wakes up and says, I don't want to go. I'm not going. Sometimes don't push too much. They might be hearing from the spirit and you're not. It happens a lot. And the kid says, I don't want to go. I'm not going. You say, why? What's happening? No, 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 I'm not going. Sometimes, okay, not all the time, but sometimes. But if you're, that's if you're what? If your spirit is undeveloped. Now, my point is this. Okay, let's go ahead. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. That means walking according to him. Eh? Because the body only understands one language, lust. Everybody understands what one language. What? Lust. That's all. That's all. That's the only thing the body does. If you want, if you have this food, it will want this one. You know it. Eh? And that's how the body is. You will go to a restaurant. Wanting to eat pizza. Then when they bring your pizza, you will see somebody eating a burger and then you want a bag. That's how the body behaves. Is that it? Hey, you will want a certain beautiful girl until you want, until you have her. As soon as you have her, then you want another one. <laughs> Yet before, she was actually the one you wanted. You understand? Eh? But the body, that's how the body is. That's why the body is supposed to be a servant. It's supposed to be put under. It is not supposed to be listened to. Because if you listen to it, you're going in. It's taking you to the grave. Because you'll want somebody. Um, uh, Pastor Kwan, when is your wedding? Eh? 20th May. Eh? Praise the Lord. Give us, you give, you give people your 80th. Your, this man here is a very, very, you know, good partner of ours. So contribute to what he found somebody whom he wants. I hope the body is not deceiving him. <laughs> 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 
I saw the Kwajula. He has a very beautiful body. But the problem with the body is after he has married her, he said, but the other one. <laughs> now, okay, according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swearing words. Have you ever seen people like that? Who are powerful speakers. They come and speak powerful things. But actually, when you tear them apart, there is nothing. They are empty. But they speak. Speak. Great swearing words. And they psych people. Eh? And sometimes man, psych is good. Eh? For <laughs> I, I remember a time. Um, uh, okay, it wasn't psych. But I went to a conference. And there was this man from America who was an evangelist. And I taken a while without listening to evangelical messages. Eh? But he was a good evangelist. You know, a good evangelist can speak and you get faith. Yeah? Like he builds your faith for anything. That's how they build the faith for people to get born again, people to get healed. Now, this man used that scripture in Mark. I will never forget it. He used that scripture in Mark 9. Remember the man who was born blind? Yeah? Then the man is born blind, then he finds Jesus and what? And um, so go and wash in the pool. And what then he comes back and the man is seeing. Then he reads until they ask, Aren't you the man who is born blind? The man said, I am he. How then do you now see? Then the man says, A man called Jesus. Then the guy says, You stop there, man. <laughs> then now he preached it. He gave his testimonies how he is, but he was a drug addict, what? But he met a man called Jesus. What? But I was, he psyched me up, eh? I felt like I couldn't believe God for it. <laughs> I, I, by the way, he was a good evangelist. Eh? Just from that thing, eh? how then do you now see a man called Jesus? Eh? Oh, man. That was uh, like, anyhow, in, in, uh, that was Nyongeza. Eh? That was Nyongeza. Praise the Lord. Eh? And, uh, and I've, never, I've never forgotten that. Because by the time the man finished preaching, all of us were, you know, in a certain place. Eh? We are going to encounter a man called who? Anyhow, the great way flattering people to get plus flattering people to gain advantage. Go ahead. Verse 17. Then it says, But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers. Now, the people who believe the illusion are mockers. Mockers. Because it's very easy to mock. Amen. I remember I was telling somebody the other day about some pastor who asked me that. But how do you? He told me that I don't know. If people are not giving in my church. Eh? How do I get people to give? So I looked at him and I, I was gauging how much information he can handle. But then at the time when he asked me that, I knew what I knew. But it had not yet started bearing fruit. You understand? So I was broke. But I knew something. And I knew what I knew was going to take me somewhere. You understand? Eh? But it had not yet taken me there. So in that case, you actually have, you feel that you don't even have the platform to talk. Because you're going to talk and people say, uh-huh. So how come, if you know so much, how come you came on the border border? Not even Uber. You understand? Eh? Hey. And see, that's how the world is. Eh? I can be here. I have the secret of how to flatten your stomach and get a six pack. But I will not tell you because you say if you know, how come it is not? <laughs> <laughs> you say, how come it is not working for you? Let it first work for you first, and then we shall listen to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you see, sometimes somebody might be knowing, but it has not yet worked for them. Now, for that time, it had not, nothing had worked for me, but I knew. So I told him some things. As soon as I started talking, I could see he was looking at his watch. Then I realized I'd started on a subject which I shouldn't have. So I, 
I kind of jumped out and so on. I realized he wasn't ready for it. But then I also realized that here is the thing. People. If people want quick solutions. Very quick solutions. And that's how they are. Like if you are telling him something which is going to involve him doing something. He's not interested. Those are the 10 spies. Do you know? I read that script, that scripture again. The other day I was meditating on it. And I realized that when the 12 spies came from the promised land. And they gave a report about the land. Everybody rejoiced. Until they said, now let us go and fight for it. Then they said, ah, ah, that land even eats its inhabitants. What? They are, they, <laughs> they are people who will rejoice until they have to do something about that thing. They want to sit there and things find them. And that's how they are. And you can sense that they have, somebody has chosen to be like that and you leave them. And they are the ones who talk the most. We are under a very powerful grace. We are under a very powerful grace. Then you say, huh? What have you done with it? Because it's not your words that are going to. At, the, at some stage, people are going to ask you for results. And if you are the kind like those 10 spies, then you get angry. Ah, ah what? If we are not, and then they stir up everybody. And that's how it is. Now, the people who do not want to do anything, they don't stop at not wanting to do anything. They actually want to stone those who want to do something. Like the other ten spies wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Do you know that? Praise the Lord. You know, during uh, campaigns, I went to Uweru and this gentleman gathered from his ambassadors. Now, I gave them word. Eh? about how this is the time of the church and God is taking us to, you know. And they were excited until they had to do something. They just want to be excited and now you do the rest. <laughs> that sounds good. Eh? Wish you luck. Isn't it? Uh. But you see, the reason we value people like him is for him, he actually did, like somebody who can stand up to do something. But let me tell you, now even the school things are talking about and what. There are people who just want to hear and they are not going to do anything. They will not even get 20k and say, I am giving towards the school's ministry. I'm very busy. I have a very busy job. But at least here is 50k. Let's fuel the school, school's ministry. Can't let them go and preach. They will not. They will do nothing. But they are very touched. Oh man, can you imagine those guys? <laughs> can you, how can they win? They are very angry. But, and, and that's how a majority of people are, by the way. But their anger does not lead to what? To anything tangible. They end, it ends there. Now, for me, I decided a long time ago, eh, I am not going to be the kind of person who talks and does not do anything. I am not. I am not. Now, the trouble is, you ask him what they said about me when I left. They started mocking me that he also thinks he can be president. <laughs> yeah. they, all, they have to stone you. Praise the Lord. Isn't that what they did? Mockers. That's what they do. Because they, they don't want to do anything. So they mock. You come up with a big dream, they mock. They mock because they... And that's just the way they are. And they are kind of... Their spirit men are very small, very minute... Everything about them is flesh, carnality, and so on. So they just mock. And then he says that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own and go to the last. These are sensual persons. Now, he's not talking about people outside. He's talking about in the church. He says these are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Okay? But you, beloved... Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you. One of the biggest ways of developing your spirit man is praying in the Holy Spirit. That's praying in tongues. Your spirit man feeds on. The body, you know what the body feeds on. Okay? You know what the mind feeds on. Theories and what all those things. 
unless you guide it. Hmm? You know, in Athens, there was a, there were people who, the, Paul says that their obsession was to wake up every day and go to the Colosseum. And, uh, it wasn't called the Colosseum, it was called something else. And just listen to new, new theories to entertain their minds. And how, what do you think about this? <laughs> then they start dissecting. Have you seen those such people? Eh? They do not, they are useless. They do nothing. They never go anywhere. Only thing they want to do is discuss. Eh? What this is what? Eh? Discuss. Then now when Paul came, then they said that what? What is this man, what is this babbler saying? Then he's saying he's declaring to us foreign gods. And they say, mm, okay, tomorrow we'll give you a katuti and you come and what? Explain this to us. For them, their work was to wake up in the morning and just sit eh? and listen to new things and they discuss, discuss, then they go home and eat and sleep. What an empty life. Anyway, huh? no, no, don't, don't go there. Um, uh, so you know what the mind feeds in? These are essential people who cause division, not having the spirit. Then he says, but you, the next verse, building yourselves, that is building your spirit by praying in the spirit. Let me tell you, praying in the spirit and meditating, which is what I was doing when the Lord cut me away, is like putting your spirit man on steroids. Have you known those steroids where people lift weights and they become like this? Praying in the spirit and meditating on the word of God. That is putting your spirit man on steroids. He will develop so fast. So fast. He will not struggle to feel, to, to know the direction of God. It becomes very obvious. And it becomes a part of you. You look at somebody and you know that um, this person is up to no good. Just looking. And I meet them every day in politics. Even here in church. Maybe even more so here. And you look at the person and you just know oh, this one. Eh? And you don't know. But somehow your spirit man is sensitive and has been developed by praying in the Holy Spirit and meditating on the Word of God. Eh? Very, very powerful. Like just wake up in the morning. Get a word. Think about it all day. For as long as you can. Other times you think about other things that you are going to eat for lunch and so on. Eh? But as long as you can chew on that word. You know, I chew on the word for almost six months. Non-stop. That I'm on that word. Eh? Six months. Before I even ever talk about it. And I'm chewing on the word six months. I And the Lord leads you and says, that one. Now that's the scripture which is going to. You get the scripture. Every day you're on it, you're on it. You're, every time you're praying in tongues, you're on it, you're on it, you're on it. Six months. But even if you do it for three days, it will change your life. Praise the Lord. Now, then you realize that all your life is inside here. It is not outward. It's not what you're doing out there. Okay. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, the next verse. Then it says, uh, go, go to the next verse. Keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the master mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto the eternal life. Go ahead. And on some, on some who are the other side, have compassion. Now he says making a distinction. Now I can tell you that I know how to make a distinction. Because there are some people who will come and ask you something and you know that they have decided they want to live their lives in a carnal way. So I will make a distinction and say I'm not going to waste my time. Praise the Lord. Now, others, you can make a distinction and say, this one I can actually explain to him something and he's ready to learn. You know that, haven't you experienced that? Where you see somebody comes to waste your time. And you just see he's wasting your time. And you, and you know, even if you explain to him, he's not going to change his mind. He has just come to wear you out. And those people wear out your spirit. So now he says, make a distinction. And said, but others save with fear. Putting them out of the fire. They don't know they are in fire. But he says, save them with fear. Putting them out of fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So some you look at them and say this one. If I leave him on this path, he is going in a very bad place. Because he has begun believing an illusion. And when you start believing the illusion, you go and go and go. Like it, does, it's like it doesn't stop. So he says that, hate, like pull them out of the fire. When you've made a distinction, this one can be helped. Some cannot. 
Some have made up their mind. You know there are people who have made up their minds. <laughs> you have no idea. Like they do not want to know. They have decided and man, they ended up. So, uh, okay. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Um, to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. You see, these people who come in there think that they are wise. Anyhow, let me leave there. Let me go to just one more scripture. Perhaps um, uh, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, 22. 422. Then it says, That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Go ahead. And that you may put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness. Now, I want to show, show you something here. Um, he says, there is an old man, and all of everybody has a bit of the old man who wants to keep you being who you were. You understand? Eh? There's an old, even when you're born again, there is the old man. Then it says, but there is, and that old man is created according to, is built to have lusts and more lusts. And that's how you, and by lusts, I don't mean like what you think. Because you know when you say lusts, people think one thing. But I'm thinking, I'm, I'm saying people who just want, who are not interested in pursuing anything spiritual. They want to be among spiritual people, but be carnal. They are not interested in developing themselves. Now, the old man is built like that. He doesn't want to be disturbed. He doesn't want to do anything. He wants to celebrate about the promised land and then he eats of the fruit which the spies have brought until you tell him now let's get our weapons and go and fight. Then he says, ah, leave, leave us alone. We don't want to fight. If God wants us there, let him go and just destroy all those guys. Destroy all of them. And then tell us when it's true, we shall come and enjoy the fruit. Who told you God is going to behave like that? Are you going to remain a child all your lives? He did that in Egypt because you were slaves and you could not fight. But now he says, ah, ah, if you want the land, go and fight. Praise the Lord. Now some of us will fight. Some of you will say, ah, ah, man, when you're through, come and let us know. Praise the Lord. And we wish you good luck. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. And by fight, I don't even mean, I mean like to pursue the will of God. Now that's the old man. Don't disturb me. No stress. No pushing. No struggle. Comfort. I just want comfortable things. You tell them that let's pursue this thing. And the thing you're pursuing actually brings comfort at some stage. But they are not interested. And by the way, when I started my journey, eh, there were so many of them whom I thought, I did, not, I, I did not know how to make a distinction. So I thought I could bring them and say, God has told me, let's start doing this, you know what? And they look at you and say, you think your path is too long. We don't have that time. But it's so many years later and they are still exactly where they were before. Amen? That is the deception of the devil. Ah, that is a very long path. Catch when will you arrive? And then you stay somewhere and you stay there. Ten years later, you're still there. Now, ten years later, I'm not there. And I cannot be there. But you see, because I didn't make a distinction, you try to convince people. No, no, no. Can you see? Can't you see? You know, this is like a, the person looks at you. There's one I tried to convince. Then he looked at me. Then he said, the Bagala sentence ain't this. <laughs> then I looked at him. I said, okay. Because by that time, I already knew. But God, if I'm going to preach the gospel, it is not up to me to look for the money to preach the gospel. It is not my gospel I'm preaching. A soldier does not go to war at his own expense. Amen? Let the person whose gospel I'm preaching provide the money. Me, I'm ready to go and preach. You understand? You understand? When you understand that, it saves you a lot of trouble. Like, when... I, I, I cannot be a fundraiser. 
the God never called me to be a fundraiser. If he cannot pay his bills, I will sign out and go somewhere else. But of course, he can't afford to pay his bills. You understand? Hey, for me, my work is to preach. I'm a soldier. I don't buy combat. I don't buy gun. The government which enlisted me is the one which buys. Isn't it? Have you ever seen a soldier looking for money to buy bullets? You're the one who stays with soldiers. They're all winner. <laughs> but I'm glad to see you here. <laughs> because, like, anyhow, so you are trying to explain to him that no, it doesn't work like that. If you are going to preach the gospel, why don't you trust the person whose gospel you're preaching? The guy looks at you. Hmm. And like you're talking rubbish. And by the way, let me tell you, you can be talking rubbish to some of these people, eh? Like rubbish, and he looks at you and you're talking absolute BS. Anyhow. And then he said, yeah, I wanted to say it, so I He got in choking. Do what you want. But, uh, anyhow. Now it says here, <laughs> I see Roger is scandalized. So there is the old man, and there is the Old man in 422. Passport has get us 22. 422. Put on the old, uh, put off the, f- concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt, which is not corrupt. It grows more and more corrupt. It, if it was corrupt here, after some time it gets more and more corrupt. That is its nature. It keeps on pulling towards corruption. And then he says, then to put on the new man, there is 423. Renew the spirit of your mind. Now, the spirit of your mind is, I, 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 I could talk about the spirit of your mind for so long, but it is a very, very powerful thing. Because it's not just the mind, and it's not even the spirit, but it is the spirit of the what? Because the mind has a certain direction in which it tends to go. For instance, I have seen people who the spirit of their mind always tells them that there is lack. There is no money. And that is the spirit of their mind. It is luck. They always think luck. By luck, I mean, I don't mean L-U. I mean L-A. I mean shortage. They always, always they think shortage. Always. And that is the spirit of their mind. When you tell them that uh, we are moving to Amare Gardens, they will tell you, how much are we paying? Hmm? Uh, but, you know, we could do... <laughs> you know, I, 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 I had the problem because... When we were having that office in Bugorovi, I was using it for politics and for ministry, which, was, which I didn't want to do. So I got a political office. And um, I told somebody that I, I had to leave that suburb because people in politics are not used to abundance. They want to be... So we went to some Kaslami suburb. And you should see how comfortable people are there. Very comfortable. And I'm not joking. Then one of them told me, we don't know, can you? <laughs> can you imagine? And you've gone for me better. <laughs> and the person says, at least, you know, at least this. But the other place, I said, what was wrong with the other place? He said, no. That is wastage of resources. Now you see, for him he's thinking, how much were you paying there? How much are you paying what? How much are you saving? That is the spirit of the mind. And it is in that direction. Now, turning that around from that to me who is thinking whatever is necessary, all that I have needed, thy hand as what? You have to change the spirit of your mind. And it's not easy. But you commit to it and change. When you change it, you, 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 you think differently. You don't think shortage. No. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. Now I was trying to look for, we're trying to look for, the Lord wants us to buy a place for us. Where we'll be. So the places where we are thinking of, people are talking in uh, millions of these. Eh? But I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not, because... I renewed the spirit of my mind. There is no amount of money in the world you can tell me that it scares me. None whatsoever. Because 
in, when I renew the spirit of my mind, I'm thinking about God's resources. According to his what? Riches in glory. Eh? Not according to my, <laughs> my own resources. Now, the only thing that will bother me is when I look at a place, I say, is this the place that God wants us to be in? If I can pray and I know the answer is yes, even if they are saying $100 million, <laughs> how much is God worth? <laughs> like, it does not bother me, and it took me a while, I'm telling you this for a reason, it took me a, a, a while to change the spirit of my mind away from that lack to this, at all. It does not bother The only thing is, is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this actually what the Lord would want us to um, uh, to own then if the answer is yes if I go and because there's one which I saw which they showed me initially I thought it was the one when I went to pray about it I did not feel it inside me so I said uh, no so we decided to come here temporarily as we do but when I find it as an asia, the money it's not my business. The soldier does not go to what? What? His own expense. The Lord who recruited me is the one who is going to pay. Me, I'm just going to chill. Amen? That is the beginning of freedom. You understand? The beginning of... When you know that all that I have needed, His hand has provided... Like, I used to say, Jesus, don't care about tomorrow. Sufficient for tomorrow are the problems of tomorrow. You care about today. I'm like, Jesus, but man, aren't you being too careless? Are we supposed to plan? But there's something he's trying to <laughs> communicate. Eh? Because I remember reading that scripture and saying, yeah, hey, man. But, oh, oh, if you have food for today, eat that one. Don't care about what? Tomorrow. Now go and tell that to somebody who is an intelligent person from the world you really sound like you're talking rubbish. But that's, all, that's what the Lord said. So you either believe the wisdom of the Lord, or you believe the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the Lord is the reality. The other one is an illusion. And they will put it there for you to save. I, <laughs> I remember some guy telling me how he saw <laughs> those guys, um, uh, some preachers on TV, laughing that a guy who was saving money to buy a car of $50,000. I said, I'm saving, I'll buy a car with all that dollar. Then they laughed, they laughed, man. They laughed, laughed, and laughed. It's what he's saving, then they laughed. Man, I was offended. These guys, they think everyone has money like them. But you see, when you know this side, you know that you don't, you don't save. Not like you're not supposed to save, don't get me wrong. But my point is, all that I have needed, what? Okay, that is not needed, it's wanted. Because there are cars which are not $50,000. But then, all that I have wanted, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall do. Now you graduate to that. And then you know that there is, a, there is a way it works here. Here where we are. Here where we are, if I wanted a car, $50,000 is even less than the car I drive. But if I wanted a car, Let's say of, of how much? Let's say 500 million. If I wanted it. Some of you say, you mean you don't want it? Let me tell you. The people in politics told me don't buy another car. <laughs> people would think, what it did? <laughs> because me, I was about to unleash something. Then they said, ha, mkure mbeze, sigara mweyo. Because the people who are out there, they think they, there's only one person who has money. And the person who has money has none. He's broke. He would sell us for one billion dollars to, to be seen. You understand? Hey, the money is... So, <laughs> but if I wanted a car of 500 million, eh, I, would, I would pray for a seed, which is something close to. Hmm? Then when I saw my seed, I would go and identify, actually, I would first go and identify the car, look at it, get it in my mind, and go and own it in my mind. And that would take me all of two weeks. Two weeks, maximum. After that, I would go and sow a seed. 
I guarantee you in the other two weeks after that I would have it. That's how it works here. So now, I understand why those people were laughing. <laughs> You're saving to buy a car. <laughs> because when you understand this side, the way God, and now this is what he wants all of us to understand. Because you cannot do, you be connected to the Babylonian system. Why do you think people are very vulnerable? Our society is very vulnerable. People are, because they have not understood how to fetch water from the ocean. And I'm comparing God to an ocean of water. Whichever container you take, you fill, and the ocean does not reduce. You understand? So there is an ocean of supply in comparison. You come with the with the, with the mineral water bottle, you take and go. Somebody comes with a chill. These be trucks of water, he takes and go. Has the ocean reduced? That's how the supply of God is. Praise the Lord. Now, um, um, so be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I've given you just one thing. But there are so many areas in which people can be renewed. But the reason this is so important in terms of God's provision is because when you learn this, when you learn this, when you learn this, it changes your life completely. You see people struggling, and you look at them and your life is different. Those who want to know, you make a distinction. Eh? And go and tell them, my brother, that might take you a very long time. Let me show you an easier way. Now, some of them will believe it. Some of them will not. But you see, you make a distinction. And realize, does this one belong here or the other one? If the other one wants to go the other part, it's okay. Let them try that. But after some time, when we have come to the end, when we are coming to the end of this age, and God is doing his powerful work here, the one thing he wants all of us to have is that level of finance, hmm? where everybody looks at you and is, wow, that is God's plan for the church. Amen? That is God's plan for you. So you are not asking him to do what he doesn't already want to do. Praise the Lord. He is desperate for you to, because you are going to be his testimony. You are going to be the one who is lifted up there. And you draw people to yourself. You understand? The reason I could not convince the other pastor, by then that's the pastor who eventually started selling water that from Israel. Yet it was from national water. But I tried to tell him at the beginning that, man, I don't need to do this. But I, I did not have the Musobos because I was also broke. But I knew what I knew. But because I can see people who know, who know something. And you see, they, are not, they don't have anything. But you know they know what they know. Eh? And you know they are going somewhere. And you are, when you see them, you are comfortable. Because you know this one has, has, knows what we are talking about. Eh? Just a few months down the road, he's going to be at another level, and another level, and another. And when, when I see them, in, even in my ministry, I look at them and I'm very happy. I say, now this one has so what? So, like, has, has renewed the spirit of their mind eh? in regard to finance. Now they know this, and you see them, they will come, and then they, they there's a certain comfort around them, yet you know, humanly speaking, they should not be that comfortable, but they are comfortable. Because they know something that is inside them. And they are building it. And it's just a matter of time. And when they get there, by this way, it cannot be taken away from you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that can take it away from you. You understand? If you get it any other way, uh, especially now, imagine, um, now like me, who is in Opposition politics. Where they would want to. Eh? There is nothing they can do. Nothing. Because I renewed the spirit of my mind. You understand? Nothing. It is inside here. In here. Everything I need is where? In here. So every time when I go, I am just fetching away from this well. And I took time to deposit it inside. Deposit it inside. Now a time comes when I can take it out. And uh, the levels, of course, will continue growing. Amen? Now that we've even moved here, I'm going to see bigger levels. Eh? 
for yourself. Praise the Lord. For yourself. And, and, and by the way, I want you to believe this, eh? because I'm not just talking. Eh? You're going to see bigger levels for what? For yourself. Financially, I'm talking financially. Eh? So just believe it. You don't have to do anything. Just believe. You understand? Eh? Just believe and conceptualize something bigger. Now, somebody was telling me, the Lord showed them, that when we move here, now the grace to shift houses, those who have shift houses, is going to be abundant. Now, don't think about details. Just go and look for a house you want. Eh? All that I have needed. Yes. He's the one who said those things, not you. So let him make come good on his word. Amen? So because he committed himself. So, all that I have needed is man has provided. So, if you want a better house, the grace is there now. Amen? And I'm un 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 unleashing grace now for better places of residence. If you want one. That includes even ownership. We are not just talking rent. Even ownership. Now, let me tell you. You know, you know what I told you about the house of 500 million? I mean the car of 500 million. Try that with the house. Try, at least fail, but try. Go and look at the house you want, which is on sale. Enter inside. Eh? See where you're going to put the dining table, where the children are going to sleep if you have any. Where you're going to sleep with your husband if you have one. You understand? Eh? Draw those. <laughs> like, it is, the Lord is there waiting to provide. Can you imagine? The ocean. <laughs> there is an ocean. So if you want to get enough for a house, that is the ocean that's not going to reduce. God is not going to say you've depleted my resources. Now, look at the house. If your faith is for renting, that's okay. We shall keep on doing what? Talking. But if your faith is for ownership, that's also okay. Just go and look at it. Now, here is, here is the trouble with so many people of you. You, you want to move very fast. Eh? Hey. If you are trying it for the first time, don't go and get a house of one million dollars eh? yet. Eh? Hey. But you get there. Start with something where you say, "This one I can believe. I can genuinely believe God for this." Eh? Because when you actually get it by renewing the spirit of your mind, after that the next one will become so easy because now you're confident. I know I got it. I do not have money for this one. I got it. So which means I can also get the other one by the same method, isn't it? So you start with one which is not going to collega you so much. Um, uh, not and collega faith has to collega you. You understand? But my point is, start where you can believe and be genuine to yourself that oh, honestly I can believe God for this. Then now start there. Look at it. Think about it. Have it in your mind. Put your furniture there in your head. And just go with that. And every time you do, you're giving birth. You've conceived. You are. <laughs> you know, there is a seed that has been planted in you. And now it takes time to what? To come out as a child, as a what? As a child. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Now, um, I said seed. And then I just sense there's somebody here who doesn't have a child and wants a child. Okay? Now, yeah, the seed is going to be planted. Praise the Lord. Okay. That, uh, that prayer is going to be answered. That prayer is going to be answered. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God.